All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the second half of the first round of our horror games bracket. Uh, this is our favorite horror game out of the eight games that we uh, just kind of collectively decided were the eight that we liked the most. Uh, in the last round, we saw Bloodborne and Resident Evil 7 go on. We got two more fun matchups in this round. Let's not waste time and jump right into the first one. We have two sequels in this one. We have Resident Evil 2 versus Outlast 2. Uh, for the sake of what we know, we're not going to limit Resident Evil 2 to the original version. We're going to say this is pretty much the uh, remake because that's the one that I know Travis is most familiar with. And it's the one that's freshest on my mind. And if Nick's seen any footage, that's probably the one that he also saw. Um, we'll make ties to both, of course. But for all intents and purposes, to make things sit, fit nicely, let's just pretend we're talking about the remake here. Uh, to, if we have to decide any tiebreakers there. Uh, it is going against Outlast 2, the sequel to the infamous Outlast. We didn't want to pick a game that we did in our last bracket series. So we so just, we went just to the picked sequel. a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think there's a lot of good rationale for it. Outlast 2, I think, expanded on a lot. Uh, there's a lot of things that maybe went right with it and a lot of things that maybe did not go right with it. And so, you know, we'll touch base on is it a better sequel and did it improve or did it not? Um, these are both games that I know Travis has had some experience playing now. So I don't know if you want to start and give us a point to work with, Travis. Okay, let's see. So do you want me to start talking about Resident Evil 2 or Outlast 2? Whatever makes you happy. Whichever one you let's want. See. So um, I have started playing some Resident Evil 2 and I must say I... I am greatly enjoying myself. Um, I'm actually mad that I'm playing it while recording because <laughs> it prevents me from like playing it on my own time. Um, but it is... I've definitely had some very clenchable moments <laughs> that Outlast didn't quite give me because... Like, usually, like, once you find the safe locker, you're kind of clenching because it's like, oh, he might pick my locker. But, like, he almost never does. <laughs> Whereas, when I am running through a hallway and all I see is more zombies jumping through frickin' windows and coming in places I didn't even know existed in the map... I'm like, well, shit, now I have another obstacle I have to freaking juke around in order to get through this one destination because I want to get to this one specific place. And then um, the puzzles also are much more enjoyable in uh, Resident Evil 2. I mean, are there even puzzles in that last two? I'm not even just trying to remember. Uh, not, not really. that I remember. Yeah, you Unless basically... you count pushing a wheelbarrow to jump over a fence. Yeah. But that was about it. Yeah, it's basically that. And I guess, like, some of the stuff when you're in the school, you have to, like, find... Uh, still yeah, there's a lot of searching for things, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's searching, but not puzzles. Um, let's see. I should probably talk about Outlast 2 also, just to make it not <laughs> sound like I'm... Outlast 2 made great well-needed improvements to the first Outlast. Outlast is still, I enjoy more just because I think it's my baby when it comes to horror mm -hmm. games. But um, it randomized their pathing, which was a necessity because as you guys saw when Mike and I were racing each other, it was pathetic because like, we were sprinting the whole time and knew we wouldn't even get caught as long as we yeah. were going on the right path. Um, Whereas Outlast 2, they have randomized patterns, so you still have to be careful on what you're doing. Um, and then I'm trying to remember, did they incorporate where you had a limited sprint? I think you did if you were on the hard version. Yeah, I feel like I remember that being a Yeah, because I remember being caught even though I was on a straight path. Yeah. Because freaking Martha kissed my ass. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, it definitely made it much more challenging to just sprint your way through the entire game, which, mm -hmm. when you're going for the, like, I'm a useless person type of fear, is needed. Right. You know, because I don't want to be a marathon runner when mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be the sad, pathetic person. <laughs> and uh, it still encapsulated the, like, whole... I need to conserve my batteries and use them at the proper times, especially when you're doing the harder versions where you never find batteries ever. Uh, but there were some sections that I felt just 
didn't even scare me. Like, the bow and arrow dude didn't scare me. He just pissed me off because I was just getting sniped from across the map. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, overall, I think it made great improvements from the first one just because it the certain things that, like, the replayability-wise, they were able to patch up. And I've been enjoying watching some of my friends play LS2 a lot. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm what I'm curious about is in terms of atmosphere, though, like in terms of uh, Claire and Leon just going around in Raccoon City versus I don't even know if the guy in Outlast 2 has a name, but the guy with the camera in Outlast 2. One thing that I remember from seeing gameplay of Outlast 2, especially when Travis was playing it for stream, is there really is kind of a cool atmosphere that it gives, especially with like the, I think like the uh, like the cross as well, and just some of the uh, there was blood rain. The oh yeah, the cult seen. is crazy. I loved yeah. that story so much more yeah. than oh I'm reporting an asylum. It's they were yeah. still reporting like this these missing uh, occurrences that were happening, and then it turned out that well then she went missing when the helicopter crashed. Um, so it was kind of like us trying to get her back and then also trying to unravel all of these mysteries because you'd like read all of these documents or like these readings from the church and they were just all insane. And then like we watched the uh, priest perform whatever ritual on that one person and just murdered her in front of us. That was disturbing. <laughs> um, yeah. I think in this is kind of hard uh, just to kind of switch gears a little bit too. Resident Evil 2 has, well, I guess it's totally switching gears. Out of all the horror games I've played at this point in my life, I think it has my favorite atmosphere of any game I've ever played. I think it nails the atmosphere perfectly. Uh, there's a sequence that's going to happen, and as of our recording, Travis has not reached it, so I'm going to try to be careful not to spoil it for him because watching reactions to this is always my favorite thing. Oh, but there's a guy named Mr. X, and Mr. X will follow you practically forever in the game, uh, and he is unkillable. You cannot do anything to this man. Uh, but he just constantly is stalking you. And Santa what you Claus? end up realizing, and I'm going to try to, this is where it's a little spoiler territory. You go into a save room where you are normally safe, right? And in some of those rooms, this douche hat will follow you and murder you in front of a save spot. That is cruel. Like, Aren't there limited saves too? Uh, no. Only on hardcore. Oh, God. Okay. So this guy is the biggest prick of all. There's some rooms he can't go into, but... He plays by his own rules. He completely bends how the game works. So you're in one area. You go back to it later, but he's there, so it feels completely different. Uh, there is nothing that's ever stressed me out more than Mr. X. And it was so fun. And he has his own like little theme that plays. You can hear his footsteps. Uh, he's always looking for you and only you. Like It's just oh, no. it's, it's haunting, and it's so fun to watch. And it's so like desperate. Because you're already trying to solve puzzles. You're already trying to find things. And you have this strong guy that on hardcore can sometimes kill you in one hit. Just chasing after you. It's um, it's so fun. And I, I think that's what made Resident Evil 2 my new favorite Resident Evil game. I think the remake is what did it. Was because it just it had that fun atmosphere. And there was such a fun plot to it. Like you learn about who Mr. X is. You learn about different characters in the game. And it's all about defending people you love. Um... And unlike the first game, Claire and Leon actually have some personality. Chris and Jill, I think, were so blah characters. Uh, Claire actually has a personality. She actually has a mission. She's actually defending someone. She's uh, someone's Leon, sister. Yeah, and she... <laughs> uh, <laughs> but she's trying to save a little girl, and she's trying to save her from these people trying to do experiments on her and everything. Like, Claire has a really fun story. And that's not a spoiler, because Travis isn't doing that plot. Uh, nope. But you find out, like, the dad is doing, is, like, this crazed guy who's been experimented Mike, do you on. you want to save some of the points for the later videos? Where this is just first round. Yeah, you're right. But it's just, like, it's hard because, like, it, your Ocarina of Time, like, in horror speak, is Resident Evil 2 for me right now. Like, Oh, I'm sorry. Then I'll let you yeah, talk. <laughs> there's just, like, there's so many more things I could say, too. It's just, it like, it was perfect. Like, it just captured the setting and the environment. Uh, and to Outlast 2's credit, it had a lot of that. But I don't think the narrative can match up, even though it was a significant improvement on Outlast. 
uh, it still has a ways to go. And as far as atmosphere goes, Resident Evil 2's, it, it resonated with me more. Like Outlast 2, it had a cool environment, but do we really remember any areas as being like concrete and like incredible? You know, besides the school, maybe. Well, like, yeah, I was going to say the school me. got me, but another thing that got me is is they used lyrics from some of my favorite songs. Yes, and that made is it true. Incredibly creepy. So it, like that was very creepy. It it also like went to me to a personal level, and that wasn't okay because I wasn't able the, to listen to that song for a while. The game <laughs> had too many tongues, though. <laughs> so many tongues. Oh too much gosh. licking from, in that game. Licking from the ceiling. <laughs> um. So, I, I think we talked a lot about this. Do we just want to get to the voting? Sure. Uh, I'll go first because I think mine is pretty obvious. I'm going to vote Resident Evil 2. Uh, I love Outlast 2. It did a lot of great things, but it was an improvement on Outlast. But I like Outlast 2 to me is not a titan of horror. It's a great horror game. It did a lot of jump scares, and it's a fun game to play. But Resident Evil 2 just across the board nailed everything that I want to see in a horror game. It had weapons, but it was limited ammo uh, that stressed you out and forced you to make decisions. There are clutch, scary moments. In the first three episodes, I think Travis screamed like twice. So <laughs> so we know there's fear in it still, even though you have weapons. Well, because um, the thing that was... The, the, I went through the same hallway several times, and this one thing never happened. And then all of a sudden it did happen, and it was there the entire time. I don't know why yeah. it didn't... <laughs> lures you into a false sense of yep. it really does so I think that's the reason I'm going to go with that just it was more complex and dynamic and it's it's hard for me to go against something like that that's fair Nick you want to go well Travis do you want me to go <laughs> I mean I'm going to go Resident Evil 2 for oh, I was going to say if you wanted Outlast to have a fighting chance I could be the tiebreaker <laughs> no. for Resident Evil 2 <laughs> no um cause as much as I love Outlast 2, <laughs> it's just the the story really still isn't great. I mean, it's it definitely improved from the first one, and I really hope that when Outlast 3 comes, if it's a thing, I'm hoping it's going to be a thing, we'll have like a really well thought out dynamic story that mm -hmm. like you don't have to get the whole story by finding notes. I want right. it to actually be part of the process of winning. But, um, even though, like, I barely even played Resident Evil 2, I can tell that there's going to be layers that I have to start going through, whereas Outlast 2 is still pretty on the surface. Right. It, it got a little deeper, but, um, not to the point where I'm thinking Resident Evil 2 is going, and, like you said, I did scream a little. <laughs> Yep, so, same. Resident Evil 2. Yeah. Um, one thing that Outlast doesn't do enough for me, and one thing that I am going to be looking at pretty pretty closely when it comes down to these games, is how they're able to do specific game or incorporate unique game mechanics into actually instilling that fear inside of you when you're playing and to make you like tremble holding the controller. And the reason for that is it's still a game. You can have a horror experience while watching a movie. I want to see something unique and something that you can do that's specific to the game itself. And the thing that Mike mentioned with the uh, with it being followed and whatnot, and on top of on top of Resident Evil always having the limited ammo, mm -hmm. always trying to outrun him, and then also luring you into a false sense of security like that. I think that's the kind of mechanics that I want to see in a game that has the potential to win this bracket. So I'm gonna be looking at Resident Evil 2 pretty closely for the next couple matchups. Sweet. Well, there we go. Another sweep. Uh, this is our second sweep of the, out of the three matchups we've done so far. Resident Evil 2 will be moving on to the semifinals, joining Bloodborne and Resident Evil 7. Uh, let's see what will be competing against Resident Evil 7. We have Silent Hill 2 and Amnesia. Uh, these are very distinct horror games, came out during different time periods. Uh, I am not one to speak on Amnesia. Travis will do a lot of the talking for that game. Silent Hill 2, I will be doing a lot of the talking for. Uh, I like to think the comparison Resident Evil is the franchise that everyone knows and loves for horror games. If there is any game that can make a case for being more beloved and known in the horror franchise, it is Silent Hill. Silent Hill is like the rich, pompous kid at school that's like, yeah, you're cool, <laughs> but I'm better. Uh, it, it's tough to beat Silent Hill. I, I love Resident Evil and I'm biased toward it, but Silent Hill might have a better atmosphere, um, which is really saying a lot coming from me because I'm incredibly biased. Uh, it's fantastic. I picked two specifically because two is the best one. I think not just in my opinion, but I think most people feel that way. It's also the only one that I've beaten all the way through. I've actually gotten to beat it on my own. Um, 
So I've never beaten the other ones. I've only played them, but there's so much going on in it that's very fun and creepy, and uh, it's a game that just leaves you feeling bad the whole time, which I guess is the point. Uh, Amnesia is a little bit different. It, it's a lot like Outlast, but with significantly more puzzles, I would say. Oh uh, my god, so many more puzzles. So again, I'm not going to do a big introduction for that. Travis is going to talk a lot about that game. I'm going to start a little bit with Silent... Excuse me. With Silent Hill 2. Uh, Silent Hill 2 like I mentioned, is a lot like Resident Evil 7 in the sense that you have weapons, you have a gun, and you have different things you can fight in. In all honesty, the enemies in that game are not that strong. They're actually pretty easy to kill until you get later in the game and you start having faster, quicker enemies. But for the most part, they just kind of sit there and flail their arms and sometimes throw up, uh, and that's really it. Uh, so that's not the scary part of the game. What's scary is... You can't see these enemies half the time. Uh, they pop up around corners and, you know, the, the fixed camera that this game has, you don't see a lot of them coming, but you have a radio. And the radio just plays static white noise. And it gets louder the closer these enemies get to you. So sometimes you're walking in a room and you cannot see anything, but the static's getting louder and louder. And you're like, holy crap, where is it? I can't find it. And then you just find it pop out and you're like, holy crap. Uh, it's that fun... Well, I don't know if it's fun, but it's that aspect of it that makes it so fun is the white noise is already unsettling. And then it leads to something unsettling. And then you kill it and it starts crawling around and flailing on the floor, which is unsettling. Like nothing in this game leaves you feeling comfortable. And I haven't even talked about the plot, which is completely bonkers. So Silent Hill for an atmosphere, especially Silent Hill 2, is very difficult to beat. Um. Uh, and so I think that's going to be the big... The big argument for Silent Hill 2 is its atmosphere. Amnesia, I think, is going to have a bunch of different arguments, but I'll let Travis speak to that. Yeah. Um, one quick question about Silent Hill 2. So I haven't played any of the Silent Hill games, but I did play PT all the way through. You know, the uh -huh. beautiful trailer that of the Silent Hill game that was supposed to come out. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Um, oh, Konami. So for the psychological horror that just that trailer had on me, it was insane. Did Silent Hill 2 have that same type of psychological horror? to it yes or... yes i do think it did in terms of because pt had some things that were very unsettling to look at oh right my gosh, yeah. as far as like you have the weird like baby and you're looking through the hole and mm -hmm. like there was a lot of strange things silent hill 2 was a lot like that also uh one of the main enemies in that game is pyramid head it's just a guy that has a giant pyramid on his head and he's like completely disturbing and he carries around this giant like knife on his back so there's a lot of really unsettling things nothing in the game is impossible to take down I, in fact i think in terms of gameplay it's not too hard but there's just so much going on that you're like i am so uncomfortable with what i'm looking at so i would say yes pt okay. is like a modern version of what silent hill 2 was oh dear god <laughs> um okay so amnesia is much like the outlast of you don't really have any weapons um you have to open closet doors and then close them behind you before the uh the enemies find you the enemies in there are very strong basically if they find you you're dead um <laughs> sometimes there are going to be illusions like because uh basically it starts off you're in a castle and you have absolutely no idea where you are you have get this amnesia um <laughs> I know, and the whole thing is kind of you, kind of trying to figure out what's in your mind versus what's actually being like a hallucination, and you actually have to like gain these potions in order to keep your sanity when you're in the dark for too long, and mm -hmm. that's I think my favorite concept of amnesia is you have to have light source somewhat near you at all times, otherwise you will gain insanity and then die but if you have like a lantern on you and an enemy appears you are now exposed and you're going to be found and killed yeah. so you have to kind of balance being in the dark and not going insane versus risking it and playing it with like planting more torches and stuff on top of all of these puzzles that get significantly harder and i will admit in the later games, like, I didn't even beat Amnesia yet because I've gotten to some points where I'm like, I just, I don't know what I'm doing. And then right. I'm just circling around for too long and I'm not even scared anymore. I'm just wanting to freaking move on. 
Um, Travis, can I add a point for Amnesia okay. too? One of the things that's actually really cool about Amnesia that I've that I've noticed is that uh, a common thing is that it really heightens your paranoia as you're going through the oh game. Oh my god, yeah, you and trust nothing. And that is nothing. something that. Yeah, and I'm I'm wondering if that's going to be a point that you can give it uh, in, in Silent Hill's case. So what you're saying about the uh, about the static noise coming from the radio, you're kind of knowing that an enemy is near you and it's and it can collapse on you. But one of the biggest things that I, especially when I was younger, is the fear that really worries you. The really deep fear is fear of the unknown, and I feel like that paranoia that that you get when you when you be playing Amnesia just really heightens that actual like I know we say psychological a lot, but like the the element that like uh, that you're thinking because it's not just the game is giving you the game is giving you that horror but it's doing it in a different way and letting yourself psych yourself out which i think is so cool because the game's called amnesia and yes he has amnesia but it's doing a little bit more with the fact that it's just like oh i have memory loss great but it's do it going a little beyond that and that's what i like i will say i think your point on fear of the unknown i think they both touch on that in different ways uh okay Amnesia, you're right, has fear of the unknown of you literally have no idea if something's in the room with you or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if you see something in the room, it may not actually be in the room. Right. I, whereas I think with Silent Hill 2, the fear of the unknown is you hear the noise. You know something's there. You don't know what it is, and you don't know where it is. All you know is something is next to you, right? Uh, so there's still a fear of the unknown, whereas you know something's there, but you don't know what it is. You don't know what corner it's around. You just know something's about to happen to you and you don't know what it is right so one is a fear of i have no idea if something's going to happen whereas the other is i have no idea when something is going to happen uh and which one's more scary yeah i think that's hard to say because i think the first one with amnesia leads to more jump scares right where you're like oh my god there's a bad guy and i think silent hill 2's is more of the where i mentioned like just depressing and nervous right where like you know something's there so it's not going to pop out and scare you but you just feel tense right you're nervous walking through because you're like i know something's here and something's going to happen um i think it's two different types of fear so i guess it's when you play horror games what type of fear do you go for and this is where me and travis always kind of differ where travis likes the more jump scare running i prefer the whole i like feeling more nervous right and uncomfortable so I guess it depends what you want in a horror game. They both nail it fine. I think for me, and luckily it's pretty clear cut for me, I'm not biased for Silent Hill like I am for Resident Evil. So Amnesia in my head could easily win this if we can get past the puzzle aspect. Because Silent 2 has some pretty obnoxious puzzles that I'm not gonna lie, I had to kind of look up some sort of tips to help me get through uh, it. So they both have that flaw? They do. <laughs> so. If Amnesia can overcome that, I could easily swing my vote to Amnesia. If they both have that flaw and we can't overcome it for either, I think then I'm leaning towards Silent Hill 2. I think it depends, is it a back killer for Amnesia the way it could potentially be in Silent Hill 2? Because Travis, I think if you played Silent Hill 2, you might not have finished that game either because you're not a, you don't look up guides the way I do. If I get stuck, I just look up the answer. Yeah, I, I always try my best to do it on my own, and then if it pisses me off enough, then I'll look up a guide. Yeah. So um, I think in that same vein, you might not have finished Silent Hill 2 either then. Probably not. Because <laughs> uh, I gave up. So <laughs> so I'm curious, did it break amnesia? Um, it's. I still would say it's a good game, but in certain parts, the puzzles were complex like too complex to have it still feel scary at the time because even when i was recording it when i was uh, doing it for the wii game for fame channel that don't even look at it's dead don't worry <laughs> um <laughs> like i was trying to like make certain potions and then i just had to like find certain ingredients but it tells you very little on where to find the ingredients to then bring to the room and then i had to like bring the proper bottle to then make the proper potion i was able to figure it out on my own but it took me a solid like hour mm. and i made an entire hour video <laughs> into a 10 minute video because most of it is just me wandering around aimlessly trying to find these things so then i have a question because this is something we've talked a lot about travis uh-huh we and we talked about this in resident evil 2 we talked about outlast where we said these are great horror games because even when you feel lost, you're never lost, right? Uh -huh. The game is still pushing you in that direction. Do you think Amnesia then maybe failed in that area? Um, 
Because, like, it, it made it obvious in terms of, like, you only had those certain rooms to go to. Uh-huh. And, like, it, it clearly displayed the chemical table. So, like, it, it was clearly trying to show you, here's what you should do. But yeah. the book for the ingredients was hidden in the room where I had to, like, pull open a shelf or, like, pull a book out of the bookshelf to find a key to then open the shelf or, like, the drawer <laughs> to then yeah. find the book that had the ingredients. Yeah, I was a bit bloated at times. Yeah, so, like, it it made sense in terms of, like, okay, I just had to explore the room a little more. But, like, if you're not thorough sometimes, which is, I think, why I'm doing decently well in Resident Evil in terms of finding the things. Because after playing Amnesia, I know I have to look at every freaking nick and cranny. Otherwise, <laughs> or nook and yeah. cranny. Otherwise, I will miss something. And yeah. it'll take me much longer to do something. Um, but the thing is, is like, especially in the one downstairs area, I was scared the entire freaking time because there are bad guys there. And then there's also like this watery area and there's like these water creatures that are in there. Mm-hmm. And those are the freaking worst because oh, yeah. you had to properly throw something to then attract it over there to then run to the next box that's floating on the water. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they would start eating you. And Yeah. Ugh. Interesting. Well, yeah. um, I think we're pretty much out of time for this one. Yeah. Uh, do you want to jump into the voting for this one? Sure. Who wants to start? I know Mike started with it. Wait, no. Did Travis start? Did I start one? I think you started the first one, then Travis started the second one, then I started the third one. I think we're back All to right, you. Then I gotta start the fourth <laughs> one. Might as well. Uh, it's a tough one, and it might actually break my heart. Um, possibly voting against a Kojima game, but I think I might have to actually give the edge to Amnesia. From what I've heard, at least in terms of your guys' uh, both analysis, and again, I know that Kojima creates fantastic work. Uh, the story will def- uh, story is definitely unique, and I've heard great things. Without giving any spoilers, I just hear it's a game on a deeper level that really makes you think. Mm-hmm. But if puzzles are both an issue in both of the games. <laughs> And right now, what I'm, at least from what I'm pulling from our conversation, is that the deeper level of fear is really coming from amnesia. Yes, it is. I, I know we had the discussion on either, you know, whether it's going to be scary more when it happens or where it's going to happen. But right now, I'm really only seeing, uh, I'm seeing that if I was in a situation where I don't really have any control of if something is going to attack me or not. I do think that that's more scary, and I do think the fear of the unknown is, more, is at least in my personal opinion, um, and thank God this is more of a subjective br- uh, bracket, mm-hmm. is um, is more scary to me than just knowing that something's near and it's going to happen eventually. I'm like, all right, right. well, if, when it happens, it happens, and yeah. I can kind of like just brush that off. If I don't know what's going to happen, that gets me more riled up and heightens my adrenaline more. Mm-hmm. So I'd have to vote for Amnesia. Okay. Uh, I'll go second. I think I was torn because, like I said, they both struggled with puzzles that are a bit too convoluted at times. Mm -hmm. Uh, Silent Hill 2, I think, is slightly less of a problem in that area. Uh, They're not as tedious, I guess. Amnesia's felt a little more tedious. Silent Hill 2's were just confusing, but uh, they never felt tedious to me, as difficult as they might have been at times. Um, So my whole thing was, if Amnesia could have overcame that issue, then I think I would have gone for it. But it seems like the only flaws that we really saw in both these games was the puzzles, at least for now. And Silent Hill 2, to me, with the horror that I like, which is psychological, tearing you down, making you stressed out and nervous, and the different cutscenes you have in the game where you just walk in and you have this guy who's losing his mind and he's throwing up. A lot of throwing up, I've noticed, in this bracket so far. Yeah, so you like to <laughs> throw up. That's, that's I cool. I guess so. But, uh, you know, and he's freaking out, asking for his dad, and... You know, we don't even know who his dad is and the little girl that's bothered. Like, there's so much just stuff that's weird and you can't wrap your mind around it. I think I love that aspect of it. I love the psychological horror. And so I don't think many games did it better than Silent Hill 2 in that regard. Um, so I have to give my vote to Silent Hill 2. Okay, let's see. So before I give mine, I will say that PT is one of my favorite horror games of all time. <laughs> and it's not even a game. It's a trailer for yeah. a game. Greatest game that never came out. Right? I guess. Oh, God. That would have been Konami. so good. 
Keep making your stupid pachinko machines. I know. Oh my god. Um, but I will say that amnesia does make you very nervous because, um, like you don't know what's going to be around the corner, and you can open the door very, very slowly, see that there's something <laughs> that there, slam it very quickly, and make a beeline to where you think may be the safest place. Because the thing is, is they'll still investigate the closet. Like, mm -hmm. just because you're in it doesn't mean you're safe at all. Especially if they yeah. saw you go in there, they inspect every part of the room. Yeah. So, um, and and Misha did make PewDiePie famous. Just saying. That, that was his big that breakthrough. Um, mm -hmm. So, people do absolutely love to watch this game because they just don't want to deal with the puzzles and they want to see reactions of people because you are on your toes the entire time so i'm also gonna give my vote to amnesia all right well there we go we have our first upset yeah look at well second i guess resident Evil 7 technically was an upset that was okay, five over really? four. five seed barely counts yeah five versus four i don't know if it counts yeah. but this was like the first real one i guess um so our second round is set we have bloodborne versus resident evil 7 coming up first and we're going to have Resident Evil 2 taking on Amnesia in the lower bracket. I swear to uh, God, if it's Resident Evil versus Resident Evil, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> we'll see what ends up happening. You never know. It could be both. could be neither. Uh, we will see. Um, so, next video, just so you guys know, we're going to do both semifinals in one video. We're we'll probably going to extend it to be around 10 to 12 minutes for arguments to make them a little more in-depth if we want to. But, you know, still going to do two in one video. So, again, let us know if you liked what we picked or if you thought we sucked ass in this video. Completely up to you. Uh, you can let us know in the comments to tell us what know what you would have picked. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you in the next round. Bye. Bye.